Hello guys, my name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight informational war. But in my daily videos, I try to introduce you not only to our war realities, but also to other beautiful, important and meaningful things in everyday life of a Ukrainian. And today I want to speak about the very important part of our Ukrainian life, the reason that helps us all film, talk, walk, speak, buy, sleep, and these are Ukrainian Armed Forces. On the 6th of December we celebrate the Day of Ukrainian Armed Forces, but I think every day that we have is the reason of their work and service. And I'm proud to be Ukrainian because we have the strongest and the best army in the world. Those of you who follow my channel for a certain period of time already know that Ukraine is not a new country and our independence in 1991 was just a renewed independence of a country that existed through a long period of history. And we may say that the era of Ukrainian armed forces begins not in 1991, but actually in 1917, when Ukrainian People's Republic proclaims its independence. In 1917, Russian Empire collapses, Russian Revolution begins, and many states proclaim independence, like Ukraine, Finland, and many others. And we were lucky to enjoy our independence for five long years, since 1917 to 1922. During this period, a number of important institutions inside Ukraine were founded, and of course, Ukrainian armed forces. Many of the emblems and traditions that we now practice in Ukrainian armed forces come back to that period. Then, for 70 years, Ukraine and its people were occupied by a communist regime and forced to be a part of Soviet Union, we were also a part of Soviet army. And only in 1991, with the collapse of Soviet Union and the independence of Ukraine, we renew the tradition of Ukrainian armed forces. In our Discover Ukraine series, we have a special episode about the structure and organization of the Ukrainian armed forces. And in my video today, I want to focus more on the history and evolution of Ukrainian army. So, all of that began back in 1991 with the collapse of Soviet Union. And all the Soviet army units that were located on the territory of now independent Ukraine were simply proclaimed Ukrainian army. Many Soviet traditions unfortunately remained and poisoned Ukrainian army for decades. Well, first of all, people who were a part of military at the moment of the collapse of Soviet Union simply stayed in the units they were located at the moment. And it was a mixture of different people, some of whom were, of course, not patriotic towards Ukraine, because they were Russian or from many other republics of the former USSR. The so-called Soviet people, a very toxic idea and artificial idea of a person that belongs to all the Soviet Union. We also have an episode on that in Soviet Myths Debunked. So all of these Soviet people who were part of Soviet army now were considered Ukrainian army. So, to clearly see this start of Ukrainian armed forces, we have to confess that back in the 90s, Ukrainian army was one million of the so-called Soviet people who still practiced Soviet military status, who was using Soviet orders and commands and various forms of address. Russian language was dominant at the beginning in the Ukrainian army. And in general, we may say that this change from Soviet rules into modern independent army rules was very and very slow. Not because people didn't want that, but because people who were ruling the army had lots and lots of Soviet sentiments too. 
Ukrainian people and Ukrainian government felt they need a Ukrainian military service. And that's how, at the beginning of 1990s, National Guard appeared. It was controlled directly by the president of Ukraine and consisted of patriotic volunteers who wanted to develop Ukrainian army. Of course, during the regime of pro-Russian, artificially created President Yanukovych, who simply wanted to help Putin annex Ukraine silently, just as it happened to Belarus, National Guard was banned. And only after Maidan, only after the Revolution of Dignity, National Guard starts its history anew. Today it is an important structure within the Ministry of Internal Affairs and people who are part of National Guard actively protect Ukraine against Russian invaders. 90s and early 2000s were difficult years in the history of Ukraine. We did not have much money and the world decided to trust Russia more than Ukraine or any other new independent republics. And that's why, together with Russia, the world was actively disarming Ukraine. And not having enough money to serve all of these weapons, we had to agree. The world decided to be afraid of Ukraine, but not Russia. That is a big mistake, actually. But Ukraine seemed like a dangerous country, having one million of people in the army and the third nuclear arsenal in the world. Yes, Ukraine possessed more than 1,000 nuclear heads, which ranks third after the United States and Russia. We signed Budapest Memorandum, and we have a video on that too according to which Ukraine gave all of its nuclear weapons for the guarantees of defense and protections in case of need. Something went wrong. But let's concentrate on the positive things and today Ukrainian armed forces are one of the strong armies in the world. Believe me, it is very painful for me as a Ukrainian to tell you that during these decades Ukraine was giving its weapons, its missiles and jets to Russia for cheaper gas prices or something else. And now they literally kill us with these very same missiles that were taken out of Ukraine according to various disarmament agreements. So please arm Ukraine now and help us stop this Russian terrorism. So let's recollect the numbers of the Ukrainian army. At the very beginning of our renewed independence in 1991, close to 1 million people served in the new Ukrainian army. They were well trained and well equipped. Why? Because Ukrainian Soviet Republic was the western border of the USSR and the USSR was constantly afraid of the rotting West. Then in four years, in the middle of 90s, we had 400,000 people. And in 2007, this was just 200,000 people. At the very urge of the start of Russian invasion in 2013-2014, the number of Ukrainian army was much lower, 120,000 active duty men. Now, in 2023, we have more than 700,000 people in the Ukrainian armed forces, both men and women, brave and resilient. And I am proud of the Ukrainian armed forces and the way they evolved together with Ukraine. We can see a tremendous change in the standards and attitudes inside Ukrainian army, especially after the revolution of dignity and after the annexation of Crimea that inspired millions of Ukrainian patriots either to join the Ukrainian armed forces or to help them financially, physically, in any possible form. Together with Ukraine and its people, Ukrainian army developed and evolved. And for more than 10 years, Ukraine is one of the top partners of NATO. Our army participate in various trainings and 
exchange of experience. Also, we introduce the standards for further integration into NATO. Most importantly, we actively participate in various peacekeeping operations of United Nations, for example, on the Balkans, in the Africa and in Iraq. Actually, Ukrainian soldiers were the largest group of soldiers from countries outside NATO. I am sure most of you understand that 2014 was a very important year in modern Ukrainian and potentially modern global history. This was the year when Ukraine finally demonstrated we belong to European culture, we want to be a part of the European Union, we want to be a part of NATO, we don't want to be in Ruski Mir. And Russia showed its real face when invading Ukraine, annexing Crimea, Donbass and Luhansk. This was also a moment that demonstrated how Yanukovych, together with Russian advisors, was doing everything to annex Ukraine. He was disarming Ukraine, he was setting Russian citizens on top military positions in Ukraine, and at the moment of Crimea annexation, we had approximately only 5,000 active fighters in Ukrainian army. The world and Ukraine realized it was very difficult to fight against Russia. Many asked us traditionally not to escalate, and I think it was one of the hugest mistakes not to stop Russia at the very start of its aggression against Ukraine. Starting from 2015-2014, Ukrainian soldiers were training a lot, together with NATO soldiers and various armies of our allies, exchanging experience, learning from each other. And that's why, when in February 2022, Putin attacked Ukraine, he hoped for Blitzkrieg. He was trying to depict Russian army as the second strongest army in the world, but it happened to be the second strongest army in Ukraine because Ukrainian armed forces managed to break this plan, return back the control over the majority of Ukrainian territories, and I'm sure really soon we will see Ukraine in the borders of 1991. As you watch this video, I live in a country at war, and I have an opportunity to film this videos because Ukrainian armed forces help me. With all these tragedies, we have a visible progress. Ukrainian armed forces evolved in one of the best armies. We introduced NATO standards, we have trainings with our allies, and this helps us move in the direction we want, far from Russia and close to our democratic friends. And what is also important, out of all state institutions, structures and services, Ukrainian armed forces get all the support of Ukrainians. Every Ukrainian fully trusts the army. That's why we will win and we will win together with you. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons and supporting more of such videos. But most importantly, Thank you for standing together with Ukraine and our best armed forces. Slava Ukraini!